Hey everyone, Top Hat Waffle here, and today we're going to learn how to create our very own Counter-Strike Global Offensive competitive level. The first thing that we have to do is install Hammer World Editor, the map editor for Counter-Strike Global Offensive and all other Source Engine games, onto our computer. You can download it by opening Steam, and then going to the Tools section under Library. From there, find Counter-Strike Global Offensive SDK and install it. Make sure that you install it to the same location that Counter-Strike Global Offensive is installed to. Once it has finished installing, double-click to run it for the first time. After CSGO SDK loads, you'll be presented with a blast from the past, Lime Green Steam. Under Applications, load Hammer World Editor. When Hammer first loads, most of our options are grayed out. We need to open a new map file before we can do anything. Click File and then New to open a new map file. By default, the map will start in Windowed inside of Hammer. Click the Maximize button to full screen it. You're able to resize your viewports by clicking and dragging on the bars in the middle. You can quickly set all of the viewports to be the same size by pressing Ctrl A. Now we can take a look at the tools that Hammer has to offer. The Selection tool is the basic selection method that we can use to select objects in our 3D and 2D viewports. The Entity tool allows us to place objects like player spawns, props, lighting, and other entities into our level. The Block tool, or Brush tool, allows us to create brushes in our level. Brushes are the basic geometry that most of your level will be made out of. The Face Edit Sheet, or the Texture Application tool, allows us to apply and manipulate textures on surfaces and brushes in our level. The Apply Current Texture button allows us to apply the selected texture to all sides and faces of the currently selected brush. The Decal tool allows us to apply the currently selected texture onto a brush. The Overlay tool, a more powerful version of the Decal tool, which we'll go into more later, allows you to apply overlays and then manipulate them onto brushes. The Clipping tool allows us to cut or split brushes in two. The Vertex tool allows us to manually manipulate vertexes on brushes in our level. Now let's take a look at the right side of Hammer. We have our Object Selection Mode, our Texture Selection Tool, our Visibility Groups, our Entity Tools, and Manifest. Manifest is not used in Counter-Strike Global Offensive and we can disable it to regain some screen space. You can turn it off by going to View, Screen Elements, and then unchecking Manifest Bar. The Selection Groups allows us to change how we select objects using the Selection tool. We'll go into greater detail on this tool later on. The Texture Selection tool allows us to choose what texture we're using when we create new brushes. You can click the Browse button to open the Texture Browser. In the bottom left, we have our Texture Preview Size. I like to set this to 256. To the right of that, we have our Filter. This is essentially the search box. For instance, if you typed brick here, you'll get a list of all textures that have brick in their name. The visibility options allow us to choose what we can and cannot see in our level. We'll use this more later on as our viewport gets more full of objects. When our entity tool is selected and active, we can use the new objects or entity selection to choose what entity we create when we click in our 3D view. Now that we know what most of the tools in Hammer do, let's set a few good settings just to make our life easier down the road. Click on Tools and go to Options. Go to the General tab, and it's a good idea to increase the Undo level. If you want, you can also decrease the time between autosave. Under the 2D View tab, enable Default to 15 degree rotation. You'll also want to turn on Arrow Keys Nudge Selected Object and Vertex. And lastly, enable Reorientate Primitives on 2D Creation. Under the 3D Views, we have two options that we'll probably want to change depending on our computer settings. We have the back clipping plane, which is essentially our render distance in Hammer. I'm going to set this to the maximum value. We can always change it later with hotkeys. I'm also going to turn up the model render distance. Click OK to apply the settings. Hammer has four default viewports. We have our default 3D view, our top view, our front view, and our side view. You can see what view is active by moving your mouse to the top left-hand corner of any viewport. If you click, it'll give you an option to change it. Most people end up using the default. 
Let's create a block in our level. Select the block tool over on the left. And in our top 2D view, you can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Zoom in on the center teal lines. This is the origin or the center of our world. You can click and drag a box across and you'll get an outline. This is where our brush will be created. We can see it also has presence in our side views. You can pan in any view by holding spacebar and left click and dragging. Once you've resized your brush to the size you want, hit enter on your keyboard. In our top left view, which is our default 3D view, hover your mouse and press the Z key. This will enable a crosshair in the center, meaning that we're in mouse look mode. Now we can move our mouse around just like in game. You can use WAS and D to move around. You can hit Z again to toggle mouse look. Another way to quickly get to mouse look is to hold spacebar and left click and drag inside of our viewport. Now that we found our box, it's just a bunch of lines. This is because wireframe mode is the default viewport for Hammer. If we click on camera in the top left, we can see what other modes we have. We have 3D flat, which is just solid shaded colors, typically used for concepting and blocking out your level. We also have 3D textured. This is the viewport setting that most people will spend most of their time in. We have light map grid, which we'll go over more later, along for 3D smooth. For now, let's just set our camera mode to 3D textured. 3D shaded textured polygons is also an option, but this mode doesn't show us correct information, so we tend to not use it. Let's create a few more brushes, but before we go any further, we need to take a look at the no draw texture. Click browse on your texture browser and type in no draw without any spaces. You'll find a yellow texture that just says no draw on it. When you're building your level, there's always going to be faces and places that the player cannot see. For instance, players can only look out this door. They can't actually get outside to see what's on the other side of this wall. If we take a look in the editor, we'll see that no draw is here. No draw is what we apply to a face when we don't want that face to be rendered or processed in any way. We can visualize what no draw will be like by clicking the toggle visibility of no draw. With that turned off, we can see that anything with no draw on it is no longer rendered, and this is exactly how it is in game. These faces do not receive lighting information, but they do receive collision information. This should be used whenever you create a new brush, and then we'll end up texturing just the faces that we need. Double click the no draw texture to select it. The grid size is represented by a number down in the lower right hand corner of Hammer. By default, the grid size will be rather large. You can use these buttons here to increase or decrease the grid size. A common grid size to use when drafting and building your level is anywhere from 4 to 16. You can toggle Snap to Grid on and off by going to Map and Snap to Grid. You can see if Snap is on or off by Snap on or off down by your grid size. Typically, you'll want to keep Snap to Grid on when you're working with brushes. Turning Snap to Grid off can cause some issues down the line if you don't quite know what you're doing yet but it's okay to turn it off if you're doing detail work with props, which we'll go over later. To continue building out this little floor that we have, let's select it and we can extend it. Let's zoom out in our top viewport and then just grab this handle and pull it down. Now, since we should always be using no draw, let's click the texture application tool to make this entire brush no draw. Let's create two walls around the back side. Pressing Shift B, or just selecting our block tool again, we're going to zoom in on our top view and make the outline for our next brush. We can either readjust it now or create it and then adjust it after it's been made. To adjust it after it's been made, use the selection tool, select it, and then you'll get the same grab handles and we can raise it up. If we want to see the scale of the objects that we're creating, we can use a player spawn. Just click the Entity tool, and then click on the floor. By default, it will create a Terrorist spawn point, which uses the Terrorist player model. We can use this as a rough scale to see how big our world is around the player. Let's make another wall to fill in this area here. Instead of making another brush, we can do what's called a Shift Drag. Since we already have the height that we need in this object, we can just select it, and then in our top view, hold the Shift key on our keyboard and drag with the mouse. When we let go of the mouse, as long as we're holding shift, a copy will be created. 
Now all we have to do is rotate it into place. If we click on an already selected object, it'll cycle through three different modes. We have regular transform mode, rotation mode, and skew mode. Let's click until we get to rotation mode. Once we're on rotation mode, we can use the grab handles to just rotate the object. Since we've turned 15 degree snap on, all of our objects are going to rotate on a 15 degree increment. For now, let's just rotate it 90 degrees and then put it into place. Very quickly, we can just apply some textures to these three faces since those are the only ones that will be seen. If we click our face edit sheet, we'll also have the option for another browse button. If we click this, it opens the same texture browser that the other button does. Let's do search for concrete. We can find a suitable concrete floor texture. I like baggage concrete floor. And now, once it's selected, we can right click to assign it to a single face. If you're wondering why it's tinted red, this is the mask, which tells us what face we currently have selected. Let's apply brick textures to these back walls. Again, click browse and just do a search for brick. You can choose any brick texture. I'm going to pick brick wall 045A. Just right click to apply the texture to the walls and you're good. There's a fair bit more to do before we can actually play our level, but for now, let's just save the file. Clicking File, Save As, you'll notice the default location is Counter-Strike Global Offensive SDK Content Maps. Valve has given us a few versions, albeit a little outdated. You can open any of these up to see what they contain. Let's just save our level here. Make sure that you don't include spaces in your file name, otherwise the game won't be able to load them and your compiler will have an issue. Click Save to save the level. And that's going to wrap up this first little look at Hammer Editor for Counter-Strike Global Offensive. I hope you enjoyed your time here, and until the next one.